Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls Kita Edition! You gotta do that exciting jump anytime you start up again. So, oh wait, my HUD's gone. That's right. That's right, I was doing uh, lore captures, so I took the HUD out. Alright, there we go. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do a Seath lore video next, as of filming this, recording this, so that is my plan at the moment. So, um, yeah, last time we didn't really get to talk much about Velka, sadly, because... Oh. Uh, good start. So, last time we didn't really get to talk much about Velka because of dumb deaths like that. No, not really. It just Things took longer than I thought they would. That's about all there is to say about it. Yeah, I figured that sweeping R2 attack would hit both of you guys. Uh, it's mainly because I want to talk about Velka when I go to her, get her items. I think that would be the fun time to talk some Velka stuff, so. That is what we're going to do now. Then we're going to finish with Pain of World, go to Priscilla. And I think I'm going to go over to Sea because that kind of just makes sense with where we're at. I do Gwendolyn, but I can't. I gotta go get that item from the catacombs I need. So let's go ahead and use our Annex key to get up here. Uh, if you guys missed the talk about the Phalanx, I talked about them a little bit in the last Let's Play. So, let's deal with this stuff. Yeah, whoops. Yeah, I'm trying to like stay as far back as I can from this guy, because I do not want to get curse from him. Come on. Wow, that hurt me for a lot more than I thought it would. These frame rates are dropping. These frame rates are really dropping. There we go. Alright, roll away. Ah, damn. Oh, well. Do I have it as an auto? No. Alright. Let's go ahead and find my blooming purple moss clump. I have to be careful about that. I only got one more left. So there's another guy down here who's gonna shoot fireballs at me. Oh, actually there's two more down here. So the guy, so also, also notice that there's a bunch of crows over there. That's pretty important. All those crows, which I will point out soon, shortly. I'm honestly surprised the last one, uh, I thought I was far enough away to not get cursed, but I guess I was wrong. I was so, so wrong. Alright, I would like to lure this fireball tossing jackass over here. Because a bunch of uh, Velka crows are going to come attack me. Come on, man. Come on. You want to get closer to me? I know you do. Seriously. I could dodge like this all day long. I want to show off the fact that the Velka crows are guarded that dark ember. Well, anyways, while I'm doing this, before the crows scatter, notice those... There are so many crows scattered around the Dark Ember. I mean, it, to me, makes the correlation of the Dark Ember and Velka, it, it's just sound in my head, because... Oh, well, what do you know? Velka Crow came anyways. That's good, now I can lure him over here. I think they do a decent amount of damage. Oh, wow, two of them came. Yeah, see that? They do a lot of damage to me. Alright. Well... I'm not a fan of all this slowdown here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I didn't realize I was going to get backstabbed there. Alright, well, let's go ahead and quick cut. Good news! I'm toxic! That means I don't even have to worry about uh, getting toxic anymore. I'm just gonna stay toxic for a little while while I deal with this area. Because, like I said, at least I don't have to worry about getting toxic again. Which is kind of the annoyance. Alright, so anyways, see those Velka, those crows? That indicates Velka, right? They're all wrapped around this and they scatter as you go towards it and find your Dark Ember. Which we'll, we, we will take a look at as soon as I deal with the Velka crow that's about to fly down here to attack me for trying to even get this Dark Ember. So there they are, there's two of them. Let's try and take these guys out. There we go. Yeah, all I had to do was two-hand apparently. I was being too scaredy cat over them. That was my own fault for being too scared. Don't do that, me. Yeah, the reason I'm staying toxic right now is because I knew there's another one of these guys. Takes a little while. Put on the training wheels, take them off, and all of a sudden you're a big boy. Wait, why did I do an R2 attack? That didn't make any sense. 
Alright, I believe that's the last one. Let's go up and double check. I think that is. I think it is. It is. Alright. Let me get rid of this toxic map. Actually, just in case I die against the crows and I want it next time. Let's keep it. We're gonna keep the toxic Avenger status for the time being, because there's a bunch of crows who are gonna attack me as I take the Miracle Vow of Silence, which is a Velka Miracle. Which again, another thing that connects Velka to uh, these crow people here is the fact that clearly they seem to be guarding that Miracle Vow of Silence. So I think those are the last of the crows, so let's go ahead and use my Blooming Purple Moss Clump. Where are you, Blooming Purple Moss Clump? There you are. It is used. Yes. Alright. We are good, for now. So, as we keep on going further, we're gonna take the Mask of Velka, Black Cleric's Robe, Black Manchette, and Black Tights. This is what you see the Cleric using, who is up on top near the Gargoyles. This is his set. Uh, and we will talk more about that in just... Uh, let's talk about it right now, actually. So, let's look at everything we got. Alright, so... We have gotten, it's going to be in keys, the Dark Ember. So the Dark Ember is an ember required for weapon ascension. The church long hid the forbidden Black Ember, and no living blacksmith knows of it. It sends plus five divine weapons to occult weapons. Occult weapons were used to hunt the gods and are effective against their followers and kin. Huge, huge tie here between Velka and the occult because all of her crows were clearly guarding not only were crows, just normal crows, gathered all around this Dark Ember, but when you go take it, her crow people fly in to attack you for taking this Dark Ember. So clearly a connection to Velka. I, I think it's undisputable, this connection to Velka and the Dark Ember. So that's why I talk about it a lot in my Velka lore video. So, anyways, Occult and Velka are tied. The occult weapons were used to hunt the gods. So this is a lot of what leads me to believe that Velka is behind the Occult Rebellion. Is that, I mean, the tie between Velka and the Occult is just so there. Um, so anyways, there you get that tie to the Occult and Velka. And you also learn about the Occult. There's not that many items that are Occult items here, but it's really interesting. I think it's a minor detail in the game that is really kind of a cool detail. The other one you find is in the Tomb of the Giants with the Effigy Shield which talks about the failed occult rebellion and that they were trying to steal the power of Nido, which I also talk about in a bunch of my lore videos. I'll talk about that in the future when we pick up the Effigy Shield. But um, anyways, I think this is a really cool item. Uh, there's just the whole occult thing. It's such a minor thing that's in there, but I think it's actually a lot more important than the game leads you... Well, the game does lead you to believe it's important if you really look into it. It's just not as obvious as uh, it could be. And just one of those really cool things about this game. So let's go ahead and look at the miracle that we got. I think Vow of Silence. Yeah. So, Secret Rite of the Black-Haired Witch Velka prevents casting of magic within effect area. Velka, the goddess of sin, is a rogue deity, but she is versed in arts both new and old, and is considered to have a great range of influence even as gods are concerned. So, a little bit more about Velka. She's a rogue deity and a goddess of sin. Uh, interesting that she has so many ties to Gwendolyn, and a lot of weird speculation with Gwendolyn relating to her and who Gwendolyn is, um, because Gwendolyn mets out justice, but instead, while Velka mets out justice, Gwendolyn's descriptions are that he mets out vengeance, which is kind of interesting that it's different, but he hunts the exact same thing. He's kind of doing Velka's job, which, uh, I find kind of strange, and I actually think would be a reason Velka would be pissed off at him. Um, yeah, another thing is you actually receive from the crows, you receive the exact same item um, that you get for ascending, for growing in the blades, which is Gwendolyn's Covenant. So if you kill the crow people, you get that item. So it kind of makes it seem like Gwendolyn encourages killing the crow, crow people because they seem to hold that item, in my mind. Uh, it could just, it could also be a case that the crow people are holding them because they're also working towards getting them, but I think it's actually Gwendolyn. Since it's the only P NPC that drops it, I think it's actually Gwendolyn saying, I want you, yes, go kill, kill Velka's crow people. Uh, alright, so anyways, more Velka stuff. Let's look at her sword, which I just blew past. Uh, where is that? Apparently I blew past it again. I think it's up in the top. Oh, it's the parrying dagger, right? No. I got that in New Londo. Uh... 
Well, I am pooping out right now. Don't know why I'm not seeing it. Let's look at items the other way. Change equipment. Maybe I'll find it that way. Server Chateau, ba ba ba. Um, I am sorry for this. I will try to figure it out because I wasn't paying attention when I picked it up. Sorry if you guys are screaming at me while you're watching. My bad. Oh well, anyways. Let's uh, look at it item-wise because this is going to get us to... The whole Velka set is all going to be lashed together. Oh, you know what it is? I haven't picked it up yet. That's why. That's why. because I haven't picked it up yet. I just got the equipment set. Alright, so Mask of Velka. Mask worn by partners serving Velka, the goddess of sin. The partners listen to the confessions of sinners, urging reflection and salvation. Their masks symbolize separation from worldly desires. The fact that you give souls to Oswald of Kareem makes it seem like he could be a corrupt um, bishop. He could be corrupt. Um, I still think, though, that the way that he congratulates you, and in the way it sounds, he does seem to congratulate you for killing Gwendolyn. Uh, I think that that's... And I'll, I'll go ahead and try and get that dialogue when I do eventually face Gwendolyn. Because it's kind of a random dialogue that sometimes shows up. But again, only after you kill Gwendolyn. But again, um, the whole thing is... Even though he could be corrupt, I still think it shows that Gwendolyn and Velka could have been at war. But anyways, this again, Velka, goddess of sin, uh, apparently tries to help people get past their sins. And you can confess and get rid of your sin. Black Cleric Robe. The partner's attire is uniformly black in color and said to be imbued with Velka's mystical power, which provides resistance against all manner of magic. Magic also being something that Seath the scale is used. Uh, very big for Seath. And also black because black is Velka's color. So anyways, we want to go get Velka's rapier, which is going to be, I believe, this item right down here. So, see that? Let's drop down. It's either here or uh, run along a little bit. That's a soul of a brave warrior. We all, we all stand and sit in silence and bow our heads in silence for you, brave warrior. Velka's rapier is somewhere along here. Hmm. It might be along that bridge. Oh, it is along that bridge. Whoops. 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 My bad. My bad. That would be the bridge it's at. Uh, anyways, I think this is the only way I can drop at this point, so... Let's go ahead and drop off here. And the only thing is I'm going to have to kind of kill some of these guys I killed before. I don't know why it's annoying. It's just my level isn't the greatest for everything. Get out of here! Two hand against you. Son. Actually, this gives me a chance to get those items that I missed that I think you had to drop off for. So in a sense, it's actually a good thing. Hopefully, I won't get cursed by these jerk faces. And yeah, did it. Managed to do that real quick. That was actually kind of the reason I wasn't excited about going and doing this again, is because I just don't happen to want to get cursed. Anyways, uh, man, I thought this was maybe where you dropped down, but I guess I could be wrong. Uh, yeah, I know you're up there. I get it. I know, I know, I know. Or down, I guess. Up, down, all around. Alright, whatever. Let's go ahead and drop over here. You can ignore all those guys. So, I'm gonna go ahead and just run through and... Oh yeah, I gotta deal with that ancient dragon too. Anyways, I'm just gonna run down and get that Velka Rapier and then we'll come back around. I don't know why I just used an Estus last there. We're gonna lose some health for this drop. Hello, Phalanx. Goodbye, Phalanx. Oh, you followed me, huh? Backstab for that. Actually, that's like a through the... Oh yeah, that was a backstab. Not through the crotch stab. Could have been. Could have been. Let us go to the top as we rise, because we are the cream that rises to the top. That's it. Actually, I was gonna say this in American saying, but I'm sure it spawned from England first. This is why I missed this. I forgot about this door. You have to bust open. Let's get the Velka rapier. Velka's rapier. 
Hooray! That's why I missed it. It's because I completely forgot that it was over here. So, let's take a look. I was like, man, it's got to be at the top by the rapiers. Alright. A symbolic, powerful thrusting sword used by the partner's servant Delka, goddess of sin. It is no mere symbol to be sure. The partner is an inhuman swordsman and wields this enchanted blade with special sword technique. Let's also look. See that black O at the bottom there that has 110? Yeah, that's occult. That means that Velka's Rapier has an occult attack rating on it of 110 for that boost. That's a lot! Again, linking Velka to the occult with that Rapier. So, yeah, if you didn't, uh, you weren't convinced by the crows surrounding the Dark Ember, there's some other uh, possibly convincing evidence for you. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, this is just gonna be dropping me somewhere I don't want to go. Let's peace out of here and go face that ancient dragon. How? What say you? I, I. Ancient dragon, we're gonna deal with you just because, just because. I'm very split on if I want to fight Priscilla or not, because she she didn't do anything wrong. Priscilla's just you know. She's just a nice, nice girl, trying to live her life in the painted world. So, I don't know. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I'll decide when I get to her. Yeah, I'd deal with this phalanx if I wanted souls. They're actually a great way to farm for souls, especially if you have poison mist. But, uh, yeah, I'm not using souls for anything, because I can't use pyromancy, because I only have nine for my, uh attunement, so I can't even attune a pyromancy spell. And because I've been playing this as level 6, I can't use it for myself, so... Hello, ancient dragon. How about you scurry on over towards me? Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. I know you want me. I know you want me. Come and get it. Come and get me. So I believe if I remember, the strategy for killing him is let him spew his poison at you, and then you have kind of time to run in and attack before he can spew poison at you again. That is my belief. The only thing about this poison spew is it actually goes pretty far. Yeah, so now I should have time. Okay, I was wrong. What the hell? Oh, maybe? Oh, I run into this side. Go get an attack? That did not work at all. Wow, he also really hurt me for nothing. Uh, okay. But let's really, really guys, let's try to figure out the actual strategy. Maybe I will jump off for a second. Um, yeah, I think there's like a really easy way to literally just like, as he's spewing, run in and hit him. Yeah, okay, because yeah, he's spewing over there. You have to do it while he's spewing. And now he's spewing over there, so I can, should have been able to clock him. Now he's going to speed down there. And now he should be spewing the right side? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, I just kind of messed up, but eh, whatever. So now if he goes for this... Oh. Okay. Well, that works too. Anyways. I don't know how much that attack's going to hurt me for. That I do not know. Come on, you want to spew poison. Somehow this is working pretty well. I think I may have developed a new strategy I didn't know about fighting him. Oh yeah, easy strategy though for fighting him is just stand back and shoot arrows at him if you don't, if you're afraid of this guy. You can just do that, that works too. Goodbye, Ancient Dragon. We're, we're all saddened by the plight of the dragons. We were all very sad about, about it, but eh, it was your time. And we wanted a dragon scale to upgrade all of our dragon weapons we're not using. Oh, I forgot this is where the blood shield was. Because I never do this anymore. The blood, sh sh bleh, the blood shield is spoken of in the Lost Legends. The red of blood is slightly enchanted and boosts various resistances. So again, what I was kind of saying, where you can make an item that has a non-description, basically, where it's not going to relate to the lore, if you want to. Like the blood shield. You can it's pretty easy to do, so that's why a lot of times when lore items are placed somewhere, it does make it seem like they have significances for that reason. Uh should I try this? I know there's some sort of glitch. Yep, that was it. Well, that should have been it. 
I think if I'd rolled correctly, I would have been able to roll onto the, um, the ledge there. I just wanted to show that, so next time we'll play it safe, but... Or maybe I will quick cut and do it again. That's what I'm gonna do, quick cut. Alright, so we're back. Totally unnecessary at this point, because it is. Ah! Ah, no! It shall be done! No! Yeah! My souls keep on appearing further and further back. I think the game's trying to tell me something. No! Okay, so I think the ledge is for that. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna say this is taking a long time. It might work. I think I've done it before, but I don't think they patched it. If it is something they patched and I'm dumb, my bad. Point is you should be able to roll from there. There's a hidden like invisible ledge that you should be able to roll over to on this that I clearly am incapable of. Yep. Yep. His life. His life. So, there's gonna be an ambush here. Oh, whoop. Whoops. Dodge! Dodge this! Dodge this! Let's see if I can chain the spark that ambush before the other guy comes aggros and aggros at me, that Baronique Knight. Okay. I see you, man. <laughs> yeah, I love doing that. I love it. Oh, there's the the Baronic Knight wasn't there for a while. Oh, here we go. Oh, not even gonna work. Make me next time. Woo! -hoo! Do that. Do that. That's how we do. Yeah. I just love that running leap attack. It is so badass. All right, so this guy. You actually can parry him. Yes, it's true. But he will kill me in one hit if I try. So, the easy thing to do is what I'm doing right now. Especially if you have a fast roll. Just let him... Let him think he can hit you. And he will never do it. Oh, no, you are not going to S this up. Proving that you're undead. Oh, peace out. Wow, I can't believe I allowed him to S this, man. That's just depressing. In my opinion. And with a total of attack of eight, I took him out. Titan, large Titanite shard. Yes, I called it. I said it before it appeared. My memory serves me well sometimes. All right. So the thing with Priscilla is that this area is bathed in moonlight. Again, really, really connecting her to. And the whole area, really, to Gwendolyn. I mean, it just looks like it's bathed in moonlight in her, her area, so I'm gonna say it is. Um, you take steps in these, the snow, and you can see it's out. Oh, I'll talk about it in a moment. One of I'm Dave. No, I'm Keita. I'm Keita. If thou hast misstepped into this world, plunge down from the plank and hurry home. If thou seekest I, Thine desires shall be requited not. So, let me get this straight. You are suggesting I literally jump off that ledge? That's funny, like, of all the things in Dark Souls that are creepy and scary, to me, that would be the scariest thing, is, like, looking at them and be like, uh, okay, I guess I'll jump off. Oh, yeah, I forgot. We got the Xanthus equipment. King Xanthus Jeremiah equipment here. So this is where it's yellow, so now you can really see just how much, uh... It looks like the uh, connection to the old monk from Demon Souls. Like, the fact that it's yellow, too. Anyways, let's get rid of this piece. This POS! A mysterious item once worn by Xanthus King Jeremiah, the legendary exile. No one knows where it came from. The crown bears high quality cloth, which is quite soft to the touch, but it's Bright yellow color stings the eyes and is clearly far too big. So, 
He's a legendary exile. And let's see what else we can get from this. I mean, that's pretty much it, I guess. It may be tattered, but his bright yellow color still stings the eye. Uh, yeah. So, uh, some people speculate that the pyromancies we found here were actually spread by Xanthus King Jeremiah. And not only that, but he could actually be the pyromancer that we see referenced um, frequently, whose name I'm blanking out on. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Pyromancy Fireball. Great Swamp. Anyway, some people think that he might be, not Carmina, but the, uh, the person who Quailana was teaching. So, some people speculate it might have been Quailana's pupil, and that's actually Xanthus King Jeremiah, and he's the famous exile. I don't really think so. I think it's more of just a reference to Demon Souls, and that's all it's meant to be with him, especially since you also see the failings right there. And it's cool. It, it could be the case that he's supposed to be that exile who's spreading pyromancy all over the place, who just happens to be Quilana's pupil, but I, I don't think it is. Anyways, let's get the rest of Priscilla's conversation. While we talk to her. Thou must return it whence thou came. Whence this did I This land came? is peaceful, its inhabitants kind, but thou dost not belong. I beg of thee. Yeah. Plunge down from the plank and hurry home. Whence I came? That kind of almost seems like when. Like this is a different time. Probably not. It's just interesting that that was the choice in the wording. Could just be a translation thing. Uh, other thing is. Thou must return. This land. This is land peaceful. is peaceful. It's inhabited. This land is kind. peaceful. Well, okay. So here she says where I came, right? Thou must return. No, whence? Anyways. This land is peaceful. Are you telling me this land is peaceful? Are you seriously telling me this land is peaceful? Is that really what you're trying to tell me? Alright, so way to get her. I'm gonna try and do the tail cut, but uh... Yeah, probably not gonna happen. Anyways... Because sometimes I have trouble making her appear. If you throw parrying daggers at her, you can make her appear and you can see where she is. But if you watch for her footsteps in the snow, that is where she's at. So that is a easy way to find her. The way to find her. So she's around here. See, she just tried to swing. You also see the snow popping up when she does that. Do I have parrying daggers? I don't think I do. Uh, I do have throwing knives. Shoot, I wish I'd equip those. Maybe if I can find her and get away from her, I can equip that real quick. Alright, come on. Come on, Priscilla! Where are you? Should be somewhere here. Uh-huh. Okay. Let's go ahead and equip. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Parrying dagger, parrying dagger. Throwing knife. I mean, not parrying dagger. Oh, shoot. Okay. So, the reason I'm doing this is because you can actually see where she is. This is going to stick on her. Pretty cool. I can't target her, but I should just throw it in her general direction. Uh, not there. I was aiming too far down, apparently. I think if you get her to swing, that's an easy way to do it. So that should get her to swing. And... Want your footsteps. What? This isn't gonna work if I keep missing. Seriously. Seriously, Priscilla! Alright, here we go. What? Why am I missing? I'm terrible at this. This is not going to be a good showcase if I can't hit her. I there we go. As much from the... So now we Why actually know where she is. Easily. Easy way to see her. There we go. Another one is stuck in her. And hopefully this will help make her appear, too. Come on. No. Alright, well I'm out, so... I just want you to appear, Priscilla. I just want you to appear. Uh-huh. The annoying thing is you can't see her life bar when she's like this. Which doesn't matter too much except for the fact that I don't actually want to kill her. Whoops. That actually didn't hurt me that bad. I thought it would hurt me worse, to be honest. I mean, she does a lot of crazy amounts of bleeding damage, but... Anyways, thought she would deal more to me. 
You have to hit her a bunch to make her, uh, to make that appear, to make her appear. Maybe if I just switch to a, a lighter weapon, I won't have to worry about killing her. There we go. That's one attack. Let's see if I have a lighter weapon I can use, actually. Not lighter, I'm just trying to think, like, actually this, nope, can't use it, really? Okay. Interesting. I didn't know I wouldn't have stats for just Velka's Rapier. How about Mailbreaker? I'm just doing this to see if I can make her appear. I want to make you appear. Sorry this is taking so long. There we go. Woo. I wish I had a throwing knife in her now. You're not making any sense, Priscilla, with where you're heading to. Should be heading towards me. How'd you get all the way over there? Like, seriously, Priscilla, what is going on with this shit? I don't get it. Anyways, you hit her enough, she should appear. That's more or less the point. So, let's see if we can make her appear. I know you're converging around there. Why could thou not let us be? Ah! Why thou not see why Ariamis created this world? No, that's interesting dialogue. I've actually never died to her. Anyways, I'm in a fast cut. Alright guys, I'm back. And my weapon is at risk, which is no good. So... Interesting thing here, Priscilla is one who stays perma-aggro, if you were curious, so that makes that clear. Uh, damn, I guess I should have been a little bit smarter at the beginning there, at the offset. Anyways, uh, Priscilla's stuff is, where did she come from, is a lot of people's question. Um, it would seem that she's an offspring of Seath, I think that's pretty agreed on just by the way she looks. The fact that she is a half dragon hybrid. The real question is, if it like Seath seems clear, that connection is there. But who is the other uh, person that she is an offspring on? Uh, some people speculate Guinevere because that's like really the only girl that makes sense who we see. But uh, I don't know if it's Guinevere. I mean, it seems like something that Gwyn wouldn't allow. You know, I, I mean I, that just seems very odd to me. Could be. I mean, she is half human, so there is a human involved. Now, my buddy John actually thinks it might be Gwendolyn because of the moonlight shining in, the fact that she's in here, and Gwendolyn would have been the one who put her in here. Uh, just like the connections to Gwendolyn are there. Uh, I don't know about that either. John, John's pretty set on that. I, I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, that really is a big point of like, where is she from? That's a big question that's not answered. I, I don't think there really is an answer, though, honestly, especially since Priscilla's a character who originally was intended to be in Firelink Shrine, and now she's not even in Firelink Shrine. They ended up putting her in the Painted World. So I think it's just a character they didn't even end up finishing uh, her story with. That would be my guess. But anyways, yeah. If you don't notice what I'm doing for my strategy on her, though, I basically just... Watch her footsteps, see when she's coming towards me. Roll past her when she's close, so she'll do her attack, and then when she does her attack, I take a hit on her. And that will take care of her eventually. Now, since my weapon's at risk, I don't know how much damage I'm actually doing to her. But if I want her to appear, maybe that's a good thing. So we'll see if we can get her to appear. I, I've killed her before without her ever appearing. I've also killed her with her appearing. I just, it's hard to get the tail drop. I don't even know if you can get the tail drop without her appearing, so that, that's why I want her to appear. But it doesn't really matter that much. It's just something fun to look at lore-wise. I mean, not like I'm going to use it, right? But I do feel bad for killing her. That makes me feel bad. I say that as if I've already killed her, which I have not. Oh, Priscilla, you got me on that one. You got me there. Oh, you. 
shoot. Yeah. I think if there's anything else to talk about with Priscilla, but I don't really know if there is. I kind of already talked about, and as I was talking about earlier, the fact that she was initially supposed to be in Firelink Shrine. Uh, and that kind of led, and I talked about this last week, but the fact that that led to a lot of questions of, hey, who was originally supposed to be here? And there's some speculation that child Beatrice, who was cut from the game and replaced with adult Beatrice, was who was initially supposed to be in Fire or no, initially supposed to be here when Priscilla was in Fireland Shrine. Uh, just because, oh crap. Priscilla is described as a black-haired rogue witch. If uh, Velka is a black-haired rogue deity, there are some connections right there between the two. And uh, that was kind of the word I was looking for last time was rogue. The, set, the fact that they're both a rogue in their title and black-haired. So, if, uh, and also in the statue that you see, you do see a rogue, um, the Velka statue holding a little daughter. So, does indicate also a Velka seeming connection with whoever's in here. So, I mean, hell, I mean, talking about Priscilla and who her mom is, maybe, maybe it's, uh, now at this point, you could say it's Seath and Velka, which would be another reason why Velka might be really pissed off at the gods is because if Priscilla's her daughter and they locked away her daughter in here, that would give her a lot of reason to be pissed off. But hey, uh, what do you guys think? Who do you think is Priscilla's mama? I'm curious to hear. I don't know where that was. As this takes forever. She'd probably already honestly be dead if I had, um, if my scythe wasn't broken or about to break at, at risk. But, unfortunately, this is really my only decent weapon that I have. You can actually leave this fight right now if you wanted to. Even though you aggroed her, I could leave right now and not fight her. That is an option if I wanted to go get throwing knives. So, just saying, I don't really know how much conversation I should be having since I have no idea what her health is like right now. All we can do is keep on doing this. I'm sure there's a quicker way to battle her that people would be angrily yelling at me about. So hey, you know what, if you have a better strategy than this, let me know. Unfortunately, I just don't remember how to make her... Pure craft that could be bad. Just trying to add, get greedy and get two hits in there. She should be around there. Yeah. The reason I'm doing this running attack is because it's a big sweeping attack, so I pretty much know I'm. No matter where she's walked off to, I'm pretty much guaranteed to hit her. See, like, with that attack, I missed because it doesn't have very much range. Alright. You should be around here. Yeah. And yeah, see, don't try that running attack. It doesn't. It's, it's no bueno, it would seem. Man, come on. Come on, Priscilla. This is getting very frustrating indeed for me. I got a let's play to do. I gotta wrap this up, you know? Maybe I should just start swinging at the footstep. Honestly, because as soon as she swings, it seems like she's pieced out of that area. I know she's at wherever that you see that footstep. So, let's footstep hit and run away. Yeah, that seems like that works a lot better. Let's do a running footstep and roll. Yeah, there we go. That method works better. The running footstep roll. Up oh, and she's dead. Sorry, Priscilla. I wanted your tail. I would not get it. Oh, well. Uh, I, it's either her tail or what you get from using her scythe that has a cult damage. One of them does and one of them doesn't, which is really interesting. I don't know why that is. So time for a trust fall. I really hope one of you guys catches me, because I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you right now to catch me. Please catch me. I have faith! Okay, maybe I don't. I was just kidding. Geronimo! I remember seeing this in the Bartholomew trailer for the game, that clip right there. 
And I had no idea what that was. I was like, holy crap, what could that possibly be from? I didn't know it was just going to be so, like, you just do it on your own. Hey. Kind of anticlimactic in a way. Let's see how much damage I do to this guy. Yeah, I can't even kill this guy in one hit. Hmm. Kind of takes away a bunch of my strategy. So I can't do a running slice attack and just run away from these guys, so let's just run through here. I don't care if you call me cheap, cause it don't matter to me none. And a bunch of them are probably going to follow me up here, that's okay. Yeah, so again, I can't go down to fight Gwendolyn as I said in the beginning, because the item that you need to equip in order to even go see him, I don't have. That would be a uh, Darkman Seance room, maybe? I'm not remembering, but anyways, you find that in the catacombs around the hidden uh, giant skeleton that you can find in the catacombs if you want to take care of all the necromancers who are there. It's kind of like a hidden necromancer. And since I sort of just ran through the catacombs to get the Great Scythe and fight the Tomb Wheel, it's not something that I got. But I guess on my next run through when I go to the Tomb of Giants, I'll pick that up. Which kind of makes me want to go to the Tomb of Giants just for the sake of doing that and I can do everything in Anarlanda. But eh. Eh. I already said I'll go head towards Seath. So, this is actually... Seath's area is one of my least favorite areas in the game. I just don't like it for several reasons. I don't like the prison area. It's it's interesting lore-wise, but I just find it to be kind of a pain in the ass. Alright, so let's repair this sucker. That's what we can use our souls for. Repairing things. And we head. We head towards Seath with a brand new scythe. It's so new and incredible. I'm in love with my scythe. Uh, Alright, so some cool uh, stuff over here, too. I just The vistas that you can see in this game are just amazing. The fact that you can actually see um, Cease area up there. The archives, the Duke's archives. Uh, it's just awesome. So much attention to detail in this game. And then, actually, down there. If you look down there, uh, you know what? I was going to say that that's... Uh, it just looks more of the village around Anor Orlando. I was going to say that... It looks like we're the undead churches, but it's definitely not, because we know that the undead church is in that direction over there. But hey, I'm, regardless, it's pretty beautiful. I guess this is just not an area that you go to. It actually looks kind of Greek in style. If you look at the architecture down there, see the columned area right there? I'm surprised this guy's not attacking me. Anyways, that columned area right there, that looks very Greek in architecture to me. Or Roman. I did a lot of Roman. I studied Roman and uh, Greek history in college. Actually, one of my several minors in college was Greek hit Or, not just history. I got a history minor. I primarily studied Greek and Roman history, but I also did some medieval history. Uh, but, since I need something to talk about while we're doing this running with this bull hole. Um, while well, I deal with him the cheap way. Yes, get pissed off at me and I shall run away! I may have mentioned it before. I know I've mentioned it in some of my videos. I don't know if I have in my Dark Souls one. But, um, if you were curious, I double majored in computer science and video game design in college. And I triple minored in history, telecommunications, which is sort of like film and television studies. And, um, clearly not playing video games well. And I also triple minored in theater. So there you go. It's just something to mention. It was actually, really honestly, a lot of it was just planning ahead. It was just smart planning. It wasn't as difficult to do as you might think it was. Like, a lot of the classes that I took, I kind of just planned, like, okay, if I take these classes, they will count towards my major, and then I can end up getting a minor in them. Like, just the gen ed requirements that you need for your minor, or your major. And even, like, some of 
the classes I took. You could only do so many from one major that would transfer over to the other major. But I'd specifically take classes in some instances where I knew, like, okay, I can make this count towards this major and it lost, like, count towards both majors. So in some instances, my classes were kind of doing triple work, like counting towards a minor and a major. Or, I mean, minor and double majors. So, just planning ahead. That's all, really all that takes. I actually ended up doing a year in grad school as well, studying more communications. Which was kind of a waste in time. Because it was actually a two year course, I left after one year. Because it turned out that they were basically just teaching if you wanted to go. I was beginning a master's in telecommunications. And it's basically teaching if you wanted to be a teacher, which I did not want to be at all. So. Oh, cool, we got a Fangbore helmet. On my first playthrough, the Fangbore helmet was the, like, I literally wore that helmet the entire game. I got it off the, uh, the board at the beginning, and I just completely, I upgraded it, wore it the entire time. I was, I was mid-rolling, so it didn't really matter too much. So if we can get through this bull, there's actually a really easy way. Shoot, come on, bull. Let's get through it. I shouldn't, I should have done this type of roll, but whatever. So we can't use that bonfire, because we have to kill all the enemies in the vicinity. But you can use either of these areas to actually trick the bull. You won't be able to get through, and you can literally just use it like the other one. The staircase doesn't work because he can hit you uh, through the staircase. As you can see, his tusks are kind of like glitching through. So you do want to use uh, the columns if you're going to use this method that I'm using. Which may be cheap. But that's if I wanted to hurt him for a lot, I could use my charcoal pine resin because I think he's pretty weak to flame. So let's find that. Yeah, he is weak to fire. That's why I use the fire in the beginning area. He is weak to fire. I know that. Come on, boar. Come on, boar. You know you want to go up the stairs. You can do it. So, even though I don't want to teach and that wasn't my goal, I really wanted to either design video games or work in gaming journalism. So my goal, my dream was to work at G4, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Doesn't really exist anymore. But now I do do stuff for Machinima, which is pretty cool. Anyways, uh, and actually, part of me really wants to. I, I'd studied Japanese, and I kind of wish I'd minored in it, because I started off by taking Spanish classes and for my foreign language requirement, just because I did that in high school. And I, then I took Japanese just for fun, and I love Japanese. I got so much more out of it just because I enjoyed it so much. Wow, that really doesn't hurt him from war at all. Honestly, I'm kind of disappointed by this charcoal pine resin right now. Oh yeah, something I didn't end up talking about was the dragon stone. So that might be fun to use against this guy. Let's use the dragon stone and see how well it does against you. Or if you miss, it doesn't do anything. Come on. Seriously? Can I just not hurt? 12 damage. That would seem to do nothing too. So let's not use, waste this uh, charcoal pine resin in any instance while I've got it. Yeah, I thought that would add more. I'm kind of surprised. Now I know his weak point is supposed to be his ass, but for some reason I always have trouble hitting it. Maybe it's because I'm doing this up down sweep attack instead of the wider swing that I really should not have just done there. But I guess it worked out. Anyways, what I was saying before was a large part of me really wants to go teach Japanese uh, in Japan, or teach English in Japan, because I've never been to Japan, I've been wanting to go ever since I was two years old, and uh, that would kind of be a dream for me to be able to do that, but anyways, let's uh, unequip some of these things I don't want to equip on my character, like the 20 humanities. And that would be it. I just don't want to accidentally use it. Because it could come in handy at some point. Like if I wanted to raise up that bonfire. So I'm going to go ahead and try and do the uh, tactic for... This is awesome having a dragon head. I love this. If you get 30, by the way, you can turn your entire body into a dragon body. If you get 30 dragon seals to the dragon covenant. Anyways, I want to try and do the speedrunner method, 
for getting through this area, just because it's pretty cool. Oh, whoops. These guys aren't the hardest to uh, parry, because they're literally just like the other hollows that are really slow. But um, they do hurt for a lot, so if you mess up, you're pretty much in screwed territory. Uh, okay, thank you for not reposting. That was not helpful at all. Come on. <laughs> I'm trying to get my back stabbed, but it's not working. So, yeah. Yeah, only reason I'm not just like upping and going to Japan is because I've. It just. I don't know. My career is out of here in Los Angeles. Los Angeles. And I worked so hard to get to where I am. Seems like it could be detrimental. But who knows? You never know where life's gonna lead you. That's the crazy thing. You never know. So this crystal golem up here, because I killed the gold uh, one who held, uh, who held Dusk of Ubisil, this guy should have the broken pendant. Thank you for coming to me. Damn it! Damn you and your like quick attack. That's the only reason I'm not going for a carry a repose here, is because if I mess up on one of these normal attacks, it'll probably kill me. Okay, anyways, that's the only reason I hate these, this area. It's just these guys have so much strength. Crystal weapons do so much damage. Screw you, asshole. Screw you. I should have just tried on that one. Oh, well. That's all I have to say. I'll kick you away. Kick you away. I probably should. I haven't tried this yet, but I have a feeling that if you do the uh, sort of cheap method on... Uh, yeah, let's clear these guys out. Just because, yeah, see they got a power boost from the channeler. I'm going to lure him out, so... Yeah, it's just the power boost, too. That's what also makes this area kind of frustrating. Yeah, this entire area is frustrating to me. Getting locked away in prison, the power boost that the channeler gives these guys. The channelers... In the other area of the archives, who give away the power boost, it's all frustrating. <laughs> the entire damn thing. Frustrating. Oh, this guy's got a power boost. Shit. He can do some major ass damage on me right now. Some major ass damage. Uh oh, uh oh. I want to deal with you, but not when you have your damn power boost. So I don't have eight. Fuck, 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 fuck. Uh oh. Ha! <laughs> ah! Why don't I aggro the Crystal Golem while I'm at it? Oh, and another one of these guys who happens to have the power boost. Power boost DA. Damn, one of those arrows hit me, I'm screwed. Seriously. That's the end. Crap! Alright, let's go to this side. Seriously, that power boost drives me nuts! Alright. There we go. This guy's really easy. It's just trying to deal with him when the archer's there. Anyways, you are easy, sir. Ah, fucking archer! Ah. Yeah. So I kind of figured around here would be when I get into the territory of me struggling a little bit. Seriously, why am I not getting those reposts on this guy? I think it's just a glitch when you're on the elevator, because I've had that happen to me here before. Anyways, this time I need to make sure that that damn archer dies. That is definitely crap. Yeah, let's get away from you as I piss off a bunch of these guys. That was just me being dumb. I shouldn't have gone out into the main area. Where I knew the archer could possibly hit me. While I was, uh... Yeah, I just shouldn't have gone in that main area. I should have stayed to the side. So, yeah. But yeah, again, these guys, as you noticed, I just pulled off four parries in a row. These guys are really easy to parry against, at least. Uh, and again, that's kind of just a result of them being, um... Pretty much the exact same as the base hollows that you fight. There we go. Now he's out of the way. And I, oh, got these guys chasing after me with their power. Oh, what do you know? Souls that I'm never going to use. Hooray. 
Uh oh. No, 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 no. I would like to have you guys not have super strength. Super Saiyan strength, please go away. Please go away, Super Saiyan strength. Or that will do. I will also take a fuck backstab. Yep. Oh no 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 no. <laughs> ah no no. This is dangerous territory right here. Da uh oh. Backstab cool. Oh good. And they're done. Okay. Go away. Oh. Oh no. Seriously, if I die against this guy when he's not even, that would be so sad. This is a good time to heal, I think. I think. Good time to heal. There we go. What? Two damage! Two! What are you gonna do, man? Nothing, because I'm gonna backstab you. Looks like I got a crystal weapon. How about that? Crystal straight sword. Tons of strength. Gonna break easily. That's what classifies the crystal set. Alright, come come follow me, sir. Come follow me. Whoa. That soul arrow almost got me. Yay, you missed. Sorry, I'm just in a weird mood because I wasn't expecting to die earlier. Broken pendant! Only for having the DLC. You cannot get this unless you have the DLC downloaded. So let's take a look at it. The Broken Pendant. Here we go. Right by the Peculiar Doll. Broken Stone pen Pendant. Deeply enchanted. Half of a Broken Stone Pendant. The vine appears to originate from Ulusil. A powerful magic can be sensed from this ancient stone. Yet men of this time can neither manipulate nor sense its power. Which has a distinct air consisting of both reverence and nostalgia. So... We'll talk more about this when we get to when we end up going to the DLC, which I will be doing. And yes, I intend to try staying level 6 for it, which we just shall see if I have fun or end up hating my life. We shall see. Some people, man, I mean, some people honestly are just better than me at this game. I think I'm good at this game, but some people are so good. So, so good. Oh, ha! That dodge ended up working out in my favor. Anyways. Oh, gosh. Oh goodness gracious, man. Let's do that. That thing. That parry thing. That will help me greatly. Because then I can kill these guys in one hit. Whoops. That was early. Oh, you didn't do too much damage on me. I don't know what I was being freaked out about. Bam. Alright. Black Betty bam a lamb Got taken care of. Whew, man. Alright, now I gotta deal with this Chandler, who hopefully I can lure away from the archers. Oh, okay, got it. Well, I got the archer to follow me, so, hey. If I can get them to follow me more, that would be most enjoyable. Come here, archers. Come hither. No, seriously, archers, come over here. Sorry this area is taking me a while, I just... Do not like this area. I do not like my level for this area. I do not like it at all. No, I will not eat your green eggs and ham. Area. Seriously. Come on. Damn you archers. You need to come closer to me. I don't want to deal with your overpowered crap. Because right now you guys both have his dance powers. This game proves that dancing gives you special powers. Archers, seriously? Why you gotta be like that? Why you gotta be like that? Fuck you, man. Fuck you and your overpowering them. Crap! Ah. Well, I gotta hit on them. This is not working. This is way too slow. Hmm. I need a new strategy. I really want them to come. Follow me. Well, I got the Chandler to run over somewhere. Chandler, you can chase me. If someone would come over here. I guess I could run up the stairs, but that's also dumb. There's one of those guys up there. Hmm. Well, as soon as their crap wears off and he starts dancing again, that's always a good time to run in. Okay, okay. I'll accept that too. I will accept this. 
Acceptable. Although cheap. Very cheap. I don't think Chandler stays permadead this time around because he doesn't. If you want to get the Chandler, the trident, this is the area to go. Although I would suggest going to the one where there are two of them. All right, good. This damn thing cleared up. Unless I die doing the shortcut, because I've never tried it before, which would be very sad. Very, very sad indeed. To the right, I actually, I guess both sides have one of these guys. Oh, left side's just the archer. Another archer. This area is an area where if it's your first time playing through, it's just another one that proves that if you're playing Dark Souls, you might want to play with caution. Just maybe. This one requires some patience your first time through, unless you're a tank build, in which case I guess it doesn't matter. I guess. Alright. So... I believe to the right there's a Mimic. I believe. That would be my belief. Do I want to deal with this crap, or should I just try to shortcut and get the... Ah, let's just do it. Because I'm here. Because I'm here. That is the only reason. Oh, really? I do stun me with this guy for one hit, so... I'm not really doing it smartly, though. Alright. Outside. Guy's gonna try to surprise you. This area is a lot of that stuff. There's, like, all over this area. The entire archives really have a lot of those guys. I'm better. I can run through the second area pretty quickly, actually, just because of, uh... Twinkling Titanite. Just because of doing run-throughs, but... Yeah. For trying to get that, uh, trident. Okay, while he's doing that, why don't you and me try a parry repost? That worked out, and it didn't at the same time. How very Dark Souls 2 of you to hurt me while I'm trying to do a parry repost. How very Dark Souls 2. No! No, I say! No! In fact, what I do say is this. Uh, I'm going to miss on you because I'm dumb. That's what I say. Let's just do another backstab. I'm running a little on Estus Flasks. Guess I should have thought about that. Oh well. Anyways, like I said, I think this is a Mimic here. Yeah. Mimics do tons of damage if they hit you. <laughs> yeah. Tons and tons of damage if they hit you, so... It actually might be a one-hit kill on me. Honestly. But, hey. Took care of it. Peace out, Mimic. Peace out. I guess I could have used my alluring, uh... My pendant on it. To take him out. But, gotta get that crystal ring shield. Alright, so, let's go ahead and try this speedrunner method on this, because why the hell not? And if I fail, that's going to wrap up this let's play. If I don't, I'm going to try to make it to the bonfire. And then I might come back here just for the sake of uh, going to the prison. But I really do want to show off this, uh, this thingling. So here's what you got to do. You pull this. Wait, what? What, what, what? Contraption does not move. Okay. You pull this, and then you gotta roll off, and then you roll onto the edge. Okay, I missed it. I missed it. Anyways, once you're on that edge, you gotta roll onto that platform up there. If I roll too late, I'm feared that, uh... No. Okay, cool, cool, cool. No! I was so close! Actually, did I just get hurt for a bunch from that? I think I did. I think I did. There's also an interesting warrior up here that some people like thinking about for stuff for him because he really has no explanation because he's the only warrior who's encased in crystals in the way he is up here. Which, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and fight. I was gonna say let's not fight so I can keep trying that, but whatever, I'm here. So this is the only guy who looks like this, is this specific one, which has made a lot of people curious as to who the F is he. He's also very slow in all this crystal armor, which I didn't remember. I was pretty much ready to parry him. What you trying to do, man? Are you gonna roll away again or are you gonna swing? I guess I could have parried that. Oh well. Done. Just trying to save my assist last, just in case. Yeah, so there's really no lore about him. Honestly. Just some... I got encased in curses for some 
unknown reason. Oh, come on, I know you can get on there. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah, I thought that. Oh, no, no, no! No! Maybe this time. Maybe this time. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, shit. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Peace out, bitches. Well, that was interesting. Yeah. I just wanted to run the hell through this time. I was like, eh, I am going to try running. Alright, so speedrunner method I will try, I think, later in the next uh, next time. Just do some skip throughs once I get to that area again. But I figured might as well since we're here, let's and since I couldn't do it, I do want to at least get to the prison. Because you know what? It's a good lore area anyways. So we'll go to the prison because I, I really don't know if you could go to the prison uh, if you skip it and then kill Seath. Because it would be locked, wouldn't it? Kind of just an interesting uh, note there. I thought. Anyway, some cool things to talk about with Seath. Uh, you're like, hey Seath, you look scary. Peace out, I don't want to deal with you. Yeah, and you can just like be like, no, I I'm not dealing with Seath. <laughs> you can do that, so. I this is, I think, the only boss where you can go backwards through a boss fog. Now, it's probably there because you have to die against Seath. A Seath, I don't want you to take my one single soul. How is it that I have one soul, though? Speaking of which, that's really crazy. One soul? Who did I get one soul from? We want Seath to kill us without getting any curse. That would be the goal. See, please kill me without cursing me. That would be nice of you. Oh, there we go. So, if you wear a ring of sacrifice, you'll keep all your souls. If you wear a rare ring of sacrifice, you'll also keep your humanity and when you revive in prison. So, you can do those two things if you like. So, anyways, being in the prison, that's going to go ahead and wrap us up for this Let's Play. Sorry if I wasn't playing the best. Like I said, this really isn't my favorite area. In fact, it's my least favorite area. Uh, should I rest the... Eh, whatever. Let's rest the bonfire. Light it up. So we make sure we revive here. Don't have to run through all that crap again. Oh yeah, and uh, let's go ahead and kill the Jailer. Get the key from him. That was tough. Got that key real hard. Alright, so anyways, oh wait, I triggered this, now we have to watch it. Hello, maidens of Guinevere, who have been horribly disfigured into Hydra-looking creatures. We all feel bad for your loss, it really is pretty depressing. Something kind of cool, too, about this is these guys at this point automatically run for the top. And it's a really easy time to just go ahead and take them out. Something else you can do, too, by the way, 
is you can actually block them from coming up to here and hurt them in this spot if you guys want to deal with them really easy like. They are going to be automatically going for that spot up there. So, anyways, I, I just think that's kind of a cool thing to know. Let's go ahead and deal with this guy up here. And then that will wrap me up. Something I didn't know until recently is that if you press R1, you can swing at these guys. Hit them in the ass. He's almost dead though. Oh crap. Wow, he got me. He didn't kill me, I killed him. Since we're up here, let's go ahead and go for the roll-offs up here, which I think I think there are some. Could be wrong. I think there are some roll-offs up here. Yeah, this ended up going a little bit longer than I meant for it too. That's okay though. That's okay, we got roll-offs to do. So uh, you look down there, you see that area kind of protruding out. Bam! You can jump down onto it. And this is one of the many areas here that's like that. This is how you get the Maiden set, which I believe has incredibly good um, curse resistance, if I remember correctly. Let me check that out real quick with that curse resistance. Where is my Maiden hood? There it is. So you see the curse resistance 3.0. Uh, maybe not as good as I thought it was. Mask of Velka is really good curse resistance. So I guess I was wrong there. It is soft and well made, but does not offer much in the way of defense, making it ill-suited to use in battle. Interesting, you get the Maiden set here. When you think about it, those, uh, again, reconfirming that the Hydras there are actually Maidens, the Maidens of Guinevere. The fact that you find this Maiden set here. So uh, that's actually something I didn't remember. But yeah, that's another confirmation about who those are. So that's going to lead us right back to this bonfire. So guys, with that said, that's going to wrap us up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And I will see you guys next time. See you later. Bye guys. See you next time. Peace.